a, a challenging uh, uh, first race, um, I guess, uh, from all quarters. Yeah, pretty. I mean, obviously, it was a it's a big step to to step onto a Volvo Ocean race boat in itself and get to grips with the boat and how it sails and races, um, and also a huge step for me on in terms of taking on the navigation of uh, of such a of such a vessel. Um, obviously, I'm massively supported by our by our skipper Sam, who's uh, got a vast amount of experience. So, you know, I'm by no means doing it alone. And uh, uh, but yeah, it's a, definitely a big step. Yes, the uh, um, and I guess. Um, the, 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 the experience issue is, is the one that you can't bridge except by doing laps. Um, and so you're in a situation that you've got to make some big calls a few times because you can't follow. Uh, so you feel pressure of that? Yeah, I mean, I guess we arguably you could look at us and say that we're probably one of the boats that has made some of uh, the, not the biggest, maybe the biggest calls, but the biggest splits from the fleet at any uh, sort of given point. And, yeah, you sort of feel the pressure, You, I mean, particularly as we've sort of initially been struggling to, to keep with the fleet, so there is always that aspect of looking for something. Um, but equally that's interesting because, you know, that's looking at the weather and trying to find a way and when it works and, you know, generally it helps us gain back miles and so that's all, all good. But yeah, you know, you do initially in those first legs when we sort of struggle a bit more with our speed. I definitely felt more like, wow, we've got to look for something and this is quite hard and sometimes you're faced with that there are no options. And, and the reality of that is, is sometimes quite hard. But I think now, you know, we're much more with the fleet and it's much harder to make those decisions to, to go away from the fleet because, you, you know, you've really got to be 100% confident about them. Otherwise, you're really just giving away what could be a, an opportunity right at the end, for instance, like here in Lisbon where... You know, it turned into a, into a car park. Yes, yes. Um, your initial uh, break north uh, at Gibraltar um, obviously raised some eyebrows. Uh, probably the other navigators. Uh, yeah, I suspect so. Like, I mean, I guess I remember at the time doing it, but we were actually surprised no one else was was taking the opportunity. And um, yeah, I suspect other people were were you know quite surprised at the having the balls to do that on the on the first leg. But it really did feel like a, a no-brainer. We weren't. You know, taking a big risk, we didn't feel, and at that stage we weren't sort of thinking, "Oh, we're slow. We've got to do something." We were just like, "That strikes me as, you know, worst case scenario, we end up exactly where we are. Best case scenario, we come out in front, and uh, the best case scenario panned out." Yeah. Yes. The uh, um, the um, overall, the, there's been, you know, you've come around the outside and nearly made it a few times, and uh, it's uh, been been interesting. Yeah, hopefully it probably makes for exciting watching at home. It makes for a slightly more exciting watching sometimes for us. Every six hours, you're like, oh, yeah, we're making some gains here. But yeah. um, it's a bit nerve-wracking at times when you're like, oh, yeah, you know, especially on this last one coming through the high, it looked like they'd actually broken through it. And we were like, oh, if they're through it, then we've actually just made a, a huge loss. Um, but they weren't. And so that was, you know, when the next six hours comes in or suddenly, I think six hours later, we could suddenly see one of the boats. It was like, oh, OK, things are... Are going a bit more how we thought rather than rather than not. Yes. Um, now, obviously, uh, uh, you guys go very well on the inshores. Uh, you've done that, uh, and you enjoy the coastal racing. Uh, so the next two legs look interesting. Yeah, I mean the next two legs are oh, you could say much more like inshore and coastal racing. Uh, particularly the last leg. This this leg, obviously, we've got the big big extension across the Bay of Biscay, but there's going to be some pretty 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 busy corners where there's going to be a lot of happening and I think getting out of here is going to be pretty tight and interesting and the first opportunity to really probably make a make a little bit of a break which might give you a bit of breathing space but otherwise I think this leg is going to be pretty tough in terms of you know three three days three and a half days of being right next to each other and dodging islands dodging rocks at the end as we sort of have to zigzag into the Trinité before we actually get to Lorient. So yeah, I mean, hopefully, it, it, in some ways, you could say it favours us because of our performance on the on the import races. Um, but yeah, I think it's going to be tough. Yes. Now there's a uh, a hearing tomorrow. <laughs> that there is. I think it's going to be a pretty interesting hearing. Uh, quite a few boats involved. So uh, you know, it's it, it's a shame. I mean, this is one of the things we talked about a lot from the beginning about. Um, so that there weren't these protests. I mean, we just we made a genuine mistake and. Unfortunately, that's all we can say. Okay, right. Um, that's a uh, that's interesting. But um, overall, the um, uh, I guess the experience that your brother has, for instance, the contrast, uh, it it, it uh, must be just uh, um, you know so difficult. 
uh, learning as you go. Yeah, I think that's probably one of the, the hard aspects, like you say, having not done a, gone around the world or navigated around the world, you know, this is where you get the experience and the only way to get experience is to do it and, you know, you make the, the mistakes and they're, they're tough and hard to, hard to take and make when you're doing a race and, and uh, you know, from that aspect that, that's quite, uh, quite tough and quite different. Um, I think it's quite interesting because obviously my role is very different to the roles that my brother has done on the, you know, sort of watch captain and more driver trimmer rather than the navigation side of things. But you know, it, it is interesting how he views the race versus me. It's, you know, obviously it's all new and shiny to me, and it's not quite old and boring to him. But <laughs> it's a bit different. The, uh, uh, that's uh, that's interesting. And uh, you've been doing um, uh, some meteorology for the uh, British sailing team. Yeah, I mean, obviously, once I, I got this role, I had to move on. I can't split my time. Uh, you can only really, if you want to do something 100% or want to do it to your best, then you have to commit. Um, but yeah, for the last seven years, I've been working with the British Olympic sailing team and you know, thoroughly enjoyed it. It was a really tough decision to, to leave. Um, I do actually still hope that potentially there's the opportunity to go back um, and help them out. And um, hopefully, you know, and from my experience of this, hopefully I come with with more experience and knowledge that can help the team further because it's a fantastic team and a fantastic program to work in. Yes, yes, and uh, an interesting venue they've, they've got for 2016. Yeah, I mean, I'd already been out there, I think, three or four times before joining this team in, in the process of trying to learn it, learn about understand it more. But, yeah, it's a pretty tricky and pretty interesting venue. Um, and obviously there's the big, not uproar, but the big campaign going on at the moment to potentially try and move it. but. Yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting. Yes, um, moving back to this race, um, uh, we watch Will Oxley, um, amazing amount of preparation um, and I guess a lot of experience. Um, that, that's just hard to, uh, hard to, to match, isn't it? Um, we're very fortunate. We have a, a shore side navigator who's done the race two times before, Axel, and so we have a lot of support on the, on the preparation and obviously that's another way of me learning. You know, he's teaching me lots and taught me lots and but like you say a lot of it is, is experience and each leg you're sort of like oh I'd potentially do this or that and and everyone works in different ways as well I think even Axel and I learning how to work together is, is, has been one aspect as well because in some ways someone can tell you stuff but in other ways you kind of have to still do it to then understand it or not understand it but to, to take it in so um, you know there almost isn't, an, isn't enough time and yet sometimes you're like oh how do I what am I trying to What am I trying to learn now? And then you sort of get on the water, and you're like, "Oh, that's all I need to learn." <laughs> so it's a bit of trial and error, but we're very fortunate. We have an in incredible, incredible, incredible um, shore support on that aspect. Mm. And uh, you're sad that the race is almost over? Yeah, very much so. We actually had a little. We, some of the girls and I were chatting on the boat on one of the legs at a quiet moment, and I was like, "This is going to be weird, and probably more weird for a lot of them." I mean, I've only been involved in the project just over a year. I sort of joined not long before the start but some of them had been training for 18 months two years and you know I was like wow that's going to be weird all these people I've spent all this time with you and then that's it Oof, we all just kind of disappear back to our own little lives so yeah I think from that aspect it's going to be weird and a few people are like saying what are you going to do but to be honest I haven't started thinking about it I've still got two legs of the of the race to finish and I still want to finish this on a high and make sure that people remember us for the right reasons. Yes, well good luck. We hope so too. Thank you.